So what I call this is my grant writing canvas or template. And you have a copy of this. That is this one here. And I have taken this sheet and broken it down into multiple sheets. So that is what you have there in that packet. It is just this one page broken down into multiple pages. Do you have this one? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. So if you will look at the first section, and the first section is your executive summary. So we're going to scroll down and take a look at that executive summary. Now, where does the executive summary come from? It comes from those questions that you were to answer in the homework packet. So I'm going to go to the executive summary. If you don't have those documents that I gave you for homework, just take a look at page 22 of your book and what you would write on that executive executive summary page is the answers to those questions there on page 22. If you did the homework, you have the answers. So I want to give you just a basic answer to each one of those questions. But the answers are going to basically come from you. So number one says, what is the history of your organization? So as you start to write the history of your organization, you're going to always talk in third person, never first person. So you have to eliminate the words I, me, my, and change your vocabulary to they, them, our, we. Those are the only terms you can use. No I, me, my in any of this. Um, so what would your history sound like? What do you think your history would sound like? Let me give it to you. The ABC found the art is a 501c3, and ABC is your business. Mm -hmm. So if I say ABC, I'm just saying your business. So why don't you go ahead and jot that down on the document that I just gave you. Um, you have a box there, and it says executive summary. It looks just like this, mm -hmm. executive summary abstract. So your first sentence, what is the history of the organization? And you're going to say the blank, whatever your name is, is a Missouri 501c3. If you are already a 501c3, if you are not, you're going to say however you're organized. So yours would say, um, would you like me to type it? Mm -hmm. So the ABC organization is a Missouri 501c3 established in 2017, 2016, 2015, whenever you establish. Okay. 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 ABC is a Missouri nonprofit. I mean, a Missouri 501c3. Established in um, established in what year? Whatever your year is, 2017. And uh, let me get my book here. Now I'm just making this basic, but remember, if you are actually putting yours together, you might want to go find the sample. So why don't I just show you how to do that? So we're not having to type all of this. Well, tonight I found um, some grants that I put together at Hogan, and I thought I would bring some of those that were funded and show you tonight. Let's see. Um, I will try Prep for Life. This is one that I wrote for Hogan. Uh, I wrote it for $100,000, but as you can see, I didn't get all $100,000 because I wrote it in two hours and did not read the budget because they gave it to me late, so it took me a little while to, um, I mean, I just didn't read it. If you read the grant, you're less likely to lose 10000 because we asked for 100000 but 90000 in a couple hours is not so bad. So I'm going to scroll down through this grant. This is the entire grant, except I took the resumes out of the people who supported this grant. Uh, this is the budget. This is everything. And this is a state grant. 
And I know you might be looking like, oh my God, do you notice, did you notice that this is the exact same thing as you have in your book? Remember I told you there is nothing different from any grant. So once you get your draft that we're going to try to kind of halfway put together here in the next couple of days, once your dra draft is down, you will use that over and over and over and just make it better. The only way the draft changes a lot is if you decide to do something different other than what you're doing right now. So your dra draft will basically stay the same. I've got some of the same information as I'm still using today. Now the attachments or appendices is going to be special things that they ask for. So for this particular grant, they ask for organizational documents, they ask for project team staffing, that's those resumes I deleted, and they ask for an organization over, overview. Um, I'm going to scroll on down, and here is the executive, sum executive summary. So the executive summary stated Hogan Preparatory Academy Charter School, that would be your name, incorporated as a charter school in 1999. Period. That's where we're going with that. And then the mission of your organization. So what is the mission of your organization? Sometimes you would put that in, sometimes you don't. Do you have the mission of your organization already? So I would put insert mission. That's where your mission is going to go. And any of you that have a laptop, go ahead and, and bring those here. So we go from there. The next question on your form says, what is your proposed project or service? Well, in this case, I said Hogan Preparatory Academy was a student, um, has a student population of 740 and served as an alter, um, alternate educational choice for students in Kansas City. And I'm going to go on and then talk about what we do. We've won some awards, we've done this or that or other. Now, if you are brand new, you're going to say that you are a new organization that is establishing. So since this one is more education oriented, I'm going to go to a basic draft that would be more friendly to anyone. Because that one is, this one I'm noticing it's more school, and it's going to be more verbose than what you would need. So let me go to another sample. That is one that was funded. I brought two that were funded. Let me go ahead and show you those before I go to the other one that I'm going to use. This is a more simple grant here. This one I wrote for 15000 got it for 15000 I named it the STOP grant. Uh, it stood for Special Ed Transitional Opportunities Project. And you know what we did? We went out into the garden, we dug a hole, and we buried the word retarded. <laughs> The whole, we did a Louisiana style funeral. The whole school got together. We marched through the building with drums and everything. And we marched out into the garden and we buried the word retarded and it is not allowed at our school. Whatever you need the money for, just ask. Okay, but anyway, this was that particular grant. Oh, seriously. Uh, so stop using the word retarded and calling people. That was basically what it is. So this particular grant is very simple. It's a five-page grant, $15,000. This is the whole grant right here. Mm -hmm. This is the whole grant, much less than what you would think. But uh, there's one more that I'm going to take you through that I think will be a little bit easier for you. And I keep opening the wrong one, just to, and I'll get the right one here in just a second. I've not quite done it like this before, but I think if I can get this together here, you will um, like what you're seeing. Go ahead. Barb, who, who did you send this to? Which one? The, the 15000 for burying the word retarded. Uh, that was, I believe it was um, Special Olympics. I believe it was Special Olympics. That, gave us the money for that. And they funded new furniture for the, um, we don't call it special aid anymore, but um, our tutorial room. They funded all the furniture for our tutorial room. Um, we got a $35,000 grant for our garden. 
and um, I wrote that grant twice, but just gave it a different name called Senior Seniors Helping Seniors, Senior High School Students Helping Senior Citizens, and I renamed it and called it Bloomers Helping Who? <laughs> Boomers. Bloomers Helping Boomers. And your name will help you get funded. So let me see if I can find this, this grant template that I'm going to show you that I am working on. It's not totally ready. I know James wanted me to give it to you, and I am having trouble grabbing the right one. Let's see. Uh, maybe this is it. Let's see. Yeah, this is it right here. Okay. Um, on this particular grant, you're, you would enter your organization name, and if we go down to the executive summary, this one already has to where you enter your organization name. So that would be whatever your name is was established as AN Missouri Incorporation and the year established by the editor director's name. So that would be you. So you would write down what is the name of your organization, just like you did just now, was established as a what? <coughs> Fill that in. In this case, you say in Missouri by your first and last name. You would put your first and last name in there. Now, if you, if you don't have to change your sentence, but if you want to change your sentence, then you could go ahead and change your sentence. Okay, so you say it one more time. Okay. Whatever the name of your organization is, was established, let me make this a little bigger so you can see it up here. Okay, whatever the name of your organization was established as a or an, as a Missouri corporation, for you it's Missouri. If you were writing it in another state, you might have to use an depending on what the state starts with. So um, ABC was established as a Missouri 501c3 in whatever year are we there are we there yet okay. by your first and last name okay. okay okay the mission of your organization name is to provide multi-dimensional what type of services are you providing what type of what are you providing now i can take this document and turn it into your grant in less than two hours because what I would do is I would do find and replace. So instead of me typing your name over and over, I just type it once and it goes all the way throughout the document. And that is what I'm trying to put together so that you can use this instead of even having to write it all. So I'm working hard, high and low, to try to get this thing ready. It was not a part of this program, but I just want you to know that this can be done a lot easier if you go out and find the sample and just change it to your information and tweak it some. So the mission of whatever your organization name is, is to provide a multi-dimensional, and multi-dimensional just means that you've got different facets to it. You're not going to do just one thing. Do you have to say multi-dimensional? No, you can say whatever you want to say. Okay. This is where we're answering uh, your second one page for homework. What is your proposed program or project? What is the purpose of this funding request? So first we're saying what we are. So what would your category be? Your category would be um, family sustainability. It would be, um, Tell me some of what you're doing, so I, I'll know how to talk. What what are you desiring your community? Special it, needs. Special needs. Um, so you are going to be a special needs education service, or you have to determine what you are actually going to do overall. Now, if the website that I opened a minute ago is up, I can kind of give you an idea. So here are some areas that you might want to take a picture of with your phone or write down. Are you working with agriculture, children, community health care, democracy and good and governance, education, environmental conservation, 
food security and nutrition, these are all the different ones that are available. Which of these areas are you working with? And you, what, what category would veterans be? Veterans? Veterans. Um, veterans would be veterans. You could just say veterans programs and services. Now, yes, do I need to go down some? I was going to ask if you're working with something where uh, you just basically try to generate funds to uh, get a scholarship for students. Graduating seniors to go to college. That is called um, um, career and college prep, uh, college and career prep, college and career preparation. If you if you say what you got, I can give you a, give you the name pretty much usually. Yes. Elderly adult daycare. Um, senior citizens. You're working with senior services. Now let me tell you what you're going to do. You're always going to do. Events, activities, events, and workshops. Mm -hmm. No matter what you're doing, you want to have activities, events, and workshops. And I'm going to give you the five areas that I think are most important. Family, <coughs> community, Economic, family development, community development, economic development, um, did I say family, community, economic, um, family, community, economic, there's a couple more. One is funds development, so there's one more, I said economic, family, community, Economic, family, community, economic. Well, no, those are three things that you're doing with these organizations. But there's four other organizations plus funds development that you can kind of use so you don't have to change it all the time. So if you're doing family development, that means you're working with youth and family. If you're doing economic development, you're working with housing, jobs, education, uh, all of those. Um, if you're doing community development, that might be your juvenile justice programs, your, your um, veterans programs, all of those. Those would be uh, the economic development might, it might service lots of different facets. But whatever you're doing is to increase jobs, housing, um, those kind of things. So that's economic development. And there's one that I'm missing and I cannot grab it right now, but as soon as I get it, I will uh, come back to you with that. This list that I'm showing you up here is a website that you might want to write down because it is one of the only free sites left that you can find grants. No, that one's economic. So it's uh, community, family, economic development, and uh, for the life of me, I can't... Um, and youth go with family. Youth is with the family. There's one more area that I've got to grab. Uh, business okay. and commerce. I uh, know that's economic. Business is considered economic. Um, education is that any of the uh, Education is, is uh, more economic. It's more economic. So I'll, I'll think of it and I'll give you the other one. Yes. Health and wellness. Thank you. said health earlier. I didn't hear you. Health and wellness. Health and wellness is the other one. Do, now do we have those four? And the fifth one is funds development. Funds development. And remember, I think I told you, no, they don't hire grant writers. You can't hire grant writers with your budget. Who can you hire? Does anybody remember? Fund A funds developer. So your funds developer is the one who gets the, right now you're the funds developer, you're everything right now, but eventually when you are able to fund or get funded, you are hiring a funds developer because why will they not do a grant writer? They want somebody who can do two different things. What are those two things? Mm -hmm. uh, write a grant and raise yeah. funds. Yeah. Fundraising and writing grants. So you want a funds developer. That would be the fifth one. So again, those four are? Family. family youth and family development. Community, community development. Community. Economic development. development and health and, health and wellness. Yeah. Everything that you can think of 
will go in one of those categories. Everything that you can think of will go in one of those categories. The only reason you have to know of, and, and that I always tell churches, that is you should be in all of those areas. And those areas cover the marriage, the singles. Um, at my church, I'm finally working with their grant writing, setting up a grant writing team, and they had the seniors that were like 40 and up all lumped together. I'm like, no, they have different needs. When you turn 66, you have different benefits that everybody else don't have. So up to 65, 62, you know, you can start. You could even break it up 62 to 70, 75. But then there are different needs at 75, and you know, so you've got to have different sections. And is, the younger pastors just take everybody and lump them all together, and everybody has different needs. So you have to break it up into all different types of needs to meet everybody. But when you go to the grant writing databases, which is what this is, you're going to see a bunch of different categories. Just know that overall there's only about five, one of them being funds development. So there's only four you have to worry about. But whatever you're going to be doing, you need to include activities. What else? Workshops. Activities, events, and workshops. Now, did you get this website down? It is funds for NGOs. And you want to know what an NGO is? It's a non-government organization. That's what an NGO is. So these are a bunch of foundations that have gotten together, and they give you information about grants that are for non-GO. Um, NGOs. So there are governmental organizations and there are non-governmental organizations. So all of you are going to be non-governmental organizations. So you are looking for grants that are for non-governmental organizations. Uh, every one of these grants is open right now. And you have a little time to apply for them. Some of them might be close to the date. But there are hundreds of grants on this list here if you just take the time to go through it. So that's why I set those uh, computers up in the back because as we kind of get through this and you kind of know how to answer your questions then you'll be able to kind of work and I can come around and check on you and make sure that you're okay and I'm going to um, leave this grant up but don't try to reinvent the wheel you don't have to be a journalist in order to write this grant all you have to do is answer those questions on the page where it says executive summary I can come around and help you with your sentences as long as you Trust me on not ever using I, me, mine. It has to be we, our, they. And you are not. You are also not ever saying what you want. You are saying what you all can do together. Your program is put this word down to add to your bank of words for our grant writing. Align to their mission. So your mission is parallel to their mission. You all are doing some of the same things. And so therefore you can help them get to where they want to go. So I'm going to minimize this website because we might go back to it. But for now I'm going to go back to the grant. So we're doing a multi-dimensional, what kind of program? Somebody want to tell me? Health and Wellness. Children's Choir. Children's Choir. Okay, uh, Youth Development Program. So your children's choir is a youth development program. So they're not going to give you money to go to sing at church, but they're going to give you money to take that choir to the nursing home, to take it to the VA, to take it to the, and there might be partners in here. Somebody said they wanted to open a senior daycare. They will give you money to do that. The dance ministry, all of those are fundable. So you, you're going to do youth, what, at, Activities, youth events, events. Senior, Just, okay, senior, don't senior be verbose citizen, like I was. Senior citizen workshops. Uh, you're going to do senior <laughs> citizen activities, comma, events, comma, and workshops. You don't even have to come to the conference after that second one. But and workshops. So use those terms that gives some flexibility in what you do. Activities, because what you don't want to do is have to go back and ask for more money. So you're going to do activities, events, and workshops. Pretty much whatever you're doing, you're going to add that. So you're going to do multi-dimensional what? Activities, activities events, and workshops. Activities, events, and workshops. Okay. okay. And you can say variety. You can say whatever you want to. I just say multi-dimensional, but you can say whatever you want to say. Okay. Programs, including 
And these, I found these are good and they like these, but you might say something else. Exposure and participation. So what if you're taking them to Alvin Ailey? What are you giving them? Exposure. Exposure. So you're going to give them exposure and participation. In, and I'll, well, I already got it down here, activities, events, and workshops, which will, the next page, result in improvements in their lives. So you say what you want to say, or, or not improvements in your life. This is where you enter whose lives will be changed. So who's, who are you working with? If you're youth, working with youth, then that's whose lives will be changed. If you're working with veterans, veterans' lives will be changed. If you're working with senior citizens, senior citizens' lives will be changed. Okay, so basically what I'm doing is kind of walking through the questions that are here. These first few sections is just answering what is the history of your organization, which you already wrote that sentence. What is the purpose of the pr project that you're going to do? So what is your purpose? Can you give me your purpose? Somebody got a purpose. Anybody? Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Huh? Housing veterans. Okay, so you're going to provide housing to veterans, and you would put, that would be, uh, let's see, um, what is, uh, let's see, whose life is going to change as veterans to improve the community for all? Uh, your, what's your organization name? Oh, Scott Family Foundation. Okay, Scott Family Foundation has been busy establishing linkages to collaboratives. That's the people that you're going to partner with. Uh, such as, and then you list the partnerships. So on this paper, you're going to see list your partnerships. So when you answer these, fill this in with these names, you would go right through the little document that I've given you and just write, write down whatever you have here. So do you understand what I mean by this? So next week, I'm going to bring you a copy of what's up here, and you'll have this. you got to fill it out, because if you don't, it'll be too hard for us to get through this. Because if, you had, if everybody had this filled out, we could just go through this, and I would plug it in. But without everybody having this filled out, it'd be a little bit hard for me to do that, so I'm kind of working with several different things to try to help you get a little bit of an understanding. But I promise you, if you fill this out, you will have written your grant. This is a workbook. You fill this workbook out, your grant is written. You might not believe it, but what you are doing is you're actually putting this together. Remember I told you there was four, object, four goals. This goal is to build your collaborative all the way across. The second goal is to use that collaborative to build your program. That's what this is. The third goal is to decide who coordinates and protocol. Who's going to do what? Who's going to deliver what to your clientele, to the veterans? to the senior citizens, to the kids, who's going to deliver it? And the fourth one is just to get it done, do it, implementation. So that's what this is. This is one that is almost complete. And when you look at this, you already have a copy of this. Once you fill this out, this is every one of those bold prints. So if you had my app, you'd just be able to type it one time and it would generate through the whole thing. That's how I'm able to do it, as I said, within a couple of hours. Because I've been doing it a while, so I can kind of do it. It may take you, you know, a day or two or three, but it's not going to take you a long, long time if you're able to just follow this system. Does anybody not understand that part? So you have to answer these questions. Say something if you don't, because I'll try to make it plainer. Answer these questions, which are the same things that you see in here. So what is the first bold print that you see on this one? Somebody look at this one and tell me the first bold print, and let's find it on here. The first bold print on this document. That, uh, not bold print, I'm sorry. All caps. All caps. Okay. What is the first one on this one? Enter. In an organization name. So you're not putting anybody else's name. Whose name are you putting? Organization. Your organization. So um, you would have your organization name there. What is the second one that you would need to fill in? Uh, enter full name of program and acronym. Now let me tell you about the program and acronym so you're not confused. Okay, Hogan Preparatory is the organization. Prep for Life was the program. 
We didn't have an acronym. So what do you do if you don't have an acronym? Just take that off. Now I encourage you to get an acronym. But if you don't have one, don't stress. Get one later. So all you're doing is going through and you are answering every one of these um, all caps with this. Now do you have to do this? Can you just go through and just fill it out on here? Yes, you can. You don't have to do this. But once you do this, it's done. And if you ask somebody to help you, see, that's the importance of doing this. If you say, I don't want to write no grant. Oh, Lord, no. But if you hand this to a grant writer, do you know what this is? This is your grant intake form. They have everything they need from you. If you handed this to me, I could have a grant put together for you in a couple hours. Now, will I do that? No. <laughs> because that is extremely stressful. But I have done it. As you can see, I've shown you something that I've done it for. That's extremely stressful. But I could do that if push came to shove and there was enough money available. <laughs> <laughs> but once you do it the one time, it gets easier for you. Yeah. So you need to understand this process so you know when you have a good grant writer. And if they're not asking you for this, they're probably not going to be able to put your grant together. You will be able to do this if you can figure out. I know I've given you a few papers. That's why I didn't give it to you in advance, because you can say, I can't do nothing with this. So that's why I'm giving it to you in stages so you can feel a little bit better. But at some point, you're going to need the answers to these. But these are questions like your organization name, your community partnership. If you don't have them now, put who you want. There is power in saying something and writing something down. Mm -hmm. So just put down who you want. Um, in an organization acronym, if you don't have it, just say N slash A. You'll do it later. Uh, enter the name of the city or county. What is that? Jackson. Kansas City, Jackson County. So these are not hard questions. These are basic questions that you can probably already answer. So when you go through and fill this little sheet in, you will have everything that any organization would be asking you for. But now you don't want to take it with these all caps in here and everything. You want to have yours redone. Mm -hmm. But this is basically, this is, this is your foundation grant. Like if you were applying for Ford or if you were applying for any of those, four, you don't need no more than this. But now if you're applying for the federal grants, that's when you're going to need something more like this one that I have up here that's 31 pages. But in some cases, they don't even want that much. So this is everything that you would have. Okay, so if I would go through this whole grant, all I'm doing is answering the same questions that you see on here. So let me go through some more of these questions. Because this is all we're going to cover tonight, is how to put this together. I would really like it if you would try to answer the questions on here on that new form that I gave you tonight. And I'm going to give you about 15 minutes to go through. I think that might be better than me standing up here reading this whole thing. I'm going to give you about 15 minutes to fill this out. I gave, you, gave it to you for the homework. If you haven't already, fill, I'm so sorry ladies, I fill this out. Uh, no, you're going to fill it out on that, uh, you're going to answer the questions on the new sheet that I gave you tonight. This one. On your practicum, on the very first one that says executive summary. So now you're, uh, you, you should have filled it out for homework, but if you didn't, just go to the third page of the executive summary, which is page 35, on here. Answer those questions that I had given you for homework right here. And I'm going to give you about, let's, let's say, I'll give you about 10 minutes. This is how I used to write grants, though, guys. And so I want you to go through this process so you can feel the pain. <laughs> but let me go back and show you what I do now, which should turn the light on for a lot of you. Okay, if we go right back to here, this is uh, page, I think, two of that packet that I gave you tonight. This 
is actually how I write my grants now. And this is the same form that you have um, the that's filled out. Yeah, that's in the manual, page 34. It's in the manual, page 34. And it's also, she has, can you hold that up for them, please? Hold your form up. No, the one that you just had. That one. This? Uh-huh. That is, this is half of that. Because the first five on that is what you do to establish your program. The last five, which you're going to get next week, is management. This is the whole grant right here on one page. So if you take a look at um, the form that she held up, would you hold it up one more time? Everybody has this. That is this already filled out. So I gave you a sample of what it should look like when you finish filling out. But what you're going to do, remember the executive summary tells the who, the what, the when, the where, and the how much. So when you finish answering these questions, what have you done? You wrote your executive summary of the grant. Who, what, when, where, why, and how much. That's how that works together. Okay. The needs assessment says who you are serving and why. What is the national problem and what is the local problem. Okay, we're going to break up into two groups. I am helping teens in an abstinence program. I need this group to look up what is the national abstinence program on your phone. Somebody over here. I need this group to look up what is the local problem for teens and abstinence. Especially when I got kids in the classroom crying because they, there are no more abortions or whatever. So, if you would look over here, you're going to look up abstinence programs nationally. You're going to look up abstinence programs, I mean nationally, locally. So just use your phone, ask Siri or Jimmy, whoever you got, <laughs> what are the national abstinence programs? Over here you're looking at what are the local abstinence programs, and we're going to write this right quick just verbally. That's how easy it is. So you're you going to look up um, articles, sorry, articles about abstinence nationally. And you guys are looking up, I'm sorry, articles. You're looking up articles. Because guess what those articles are going to have in it? Statistics! <coughs> this is the easy way, people. This is the easy way. Your article is going to have statistics in it. And sometimes you can use those. Especially if it's an empirical article. And an empirical article cannot be over six years old. So you want to find a more recent article that was written by somebody credible like the New York Times, or somebody like that, or USA Today, if it hasn't been to us. Yeah. So did, did we find our national stats? Abstinence. Abstinence. Something abstinence. Now abstinence, I just happened to think of that. We could have put anything in there. And you're going to do it the exact same way. So look up here. My question says, who are you serving? So who did you all say you're serving? Low to moderate incomes, families, whatever. That's who you're serving. So you're going to talk a little bit about them. Then you're going to go to what is the national problem. And you're only going to give about a paragraph of that. Because I'm going to tell you what happened when I gave two or three paragraphs. The people who read my grant said that I didn't talk about the local problem. And I did, but they were too lazy to get down to the third or fourth paragraph. Did you find something? Yeah, we'll see what it's saying. <laughs> okay. The Department of Health and Senior Services. Here's one. Hold the sex, please. Yeah, Missouri law mandates that all structures. It's not giving me my desk. 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 Oh, I like that. Oh, wait a minute. That's national. Wait a minute. We want local, though. But is it talking local? He found something national. Local abstinence education providers. What is it saying about them? Does it give you? Wait a minute, did you say articles about, you want local articles about abstinence, Kansas City local articles about abstinence, national articles about abstinence. Okay. Kansas City, 2007, 53% of female high school. Oh, there you go. And 51% of male high school, Missouri reported 
ever having had sexual intercourse compared to school students, and then I will have something blocking me. But it's giving me the statistics okay. of the high school students in Missouri. Exactly. Did you all find something nationally? I found something there. Yeah. According to what? According to? According to uh, National Abstinence, what's the name of the university? Education Association. So the way you would write that, according to National Abstinence Education, what did they say? Association. They stated that in the U.S. over the past 20 years, there has been a 13% increase in the number. So I'm going to snip what you're saying, and I'm going to paste that in my grant. And I'm going to tweak it just a little bit so that it becomes mine. Because you must know the copyright rules, which means if you change the document by 35%, it becomes what? Your document. There you go. High five, ladies. That's awesome. OK, what did you all find? According to locally? Yeah. Oh, according to the Kansas City Star, what now? Johnson County accepts as uh, absolute part of sex education for $45,000 of $500,000 for three years. Now we have to get a little bit more because that's talking about a grant that they got. And what we need is statistics. But almost every subject has some national and local coverage. And that's what you get to fill this in. Now I have listed some statistical databases, but I don't hardly do that anymore. I go out and find a good article like what you all just found. I don't care what the topic is. There's a good article out there that that's already written that all you have to do is pull that article and you got your stats. And you tweak it a little bit. Okay, so now we're moving down to goal. But do you at least understand what, where I'm trying to take you to? Okay, so this is the easy way. The old-fashioned way is what I have you doing out there in the audience. But I still need you to get this information down so that you are comfortable that you can actually write this grant. Okay? But the easy way is to go out and find the article which basically gives you your needs assessment. Now your goals. What will you do? What will you and your collaborative do to develop, improve, increase, or decrease? Now those are grant words. So are you going to be increasing something or decreasing something? Increase. You're going to increase. What if you're doing teen pregnancy? Would you be increasing or decreasing? Decrease. You'd be decreasing. So sometimes it's appropriate to increase. Sometimes it's appropriate to decrease. Sometimes it's uh, appropriate to develop, create. And then you list your goal. So your goal would be to develop an abstinence program for youth, or to develop a housing program for veterans, or to develop or increase the number of housing beds for the homeless. So you're going to do one of those. You're going to either increase, decrease, develop, or improve. Which one are you doing? And that's going to become a big part of your brain. Your collaborative you're going to develop over time. But remember, there are five different types of people that you need in that collaborative. Do you remember those from last week? The, different, the five different types of people that you need in the collaborative. The for-profit. The non The non-profit. Who else? Church. The church. The school. And government. And the government agency. Those are the types of um, people that you need in your collaborative. Okay? All right, so we come over here to objectives. So your goal, write this down by your book because it's not in there. Your goal is what you're going to do. Your goal is always what you're going to do. <coughs> and from the goal, we move to the objective. The objective is how you're going to do it. All we're doing is answering these same questions. This is just the easier way. This is just the easier way up here. Once you get this filled out completely, you have your program. But what I did is I gave you one that is completely filled out. So you should be able to pull some of your information from the one that I've given you. So let me read the first goal up here. To build a stakeholder collaborative that will network with 
the ABC organization to ensure the seamless success of the ABC program, uh, providing this is in a program category, health and wellness, or one of those other ones, um, which will result in improvements to the lives of low to moderate income families, if you're dealing with families, if you're not dealing with families, you're dealing with veterans or whoever. So, um, leading to a better community for all. That's your goal. So how are you gonna do that, the objective? And with the objective, you're either going to develop, strengthen, or expand. Which one are you gonna do? Are you gonna develop, are you gonna strengthen, or are you gonna expand? You have this. So take a look at it because it's already written for you. All you gotta do is fill in the blanks. And I gave you the blanks tonight. These are gonna be your blanks. Take them home, fill it in, and this is a complete grant for the foundations and those grants that don't require a lot. All you gotta do is put your stuff in there. So now we're on the objective, which is how are you gonna do it? What are you gonna develop? What are you gonna strengthen? What are you gonna expand? The network collaborative committees for initial program planning. Because we're talking about goal one. Goal one is to build the what? Collaborative. So this has to do with the goal one, which is to build a collaborative. There's only four goals to a grant, any grant. One is to build a collaborative. Two is to use the collaborative to put the program together. Three is to decide who's going to do what once you get the program together. And four is what? Just do it. There's nothing else. Actually, it's one, two, and three. That's a planning grant. Goal four is for what? Implementation. If you're ready to do it, that's goal four. Okay, so your objective is how you're going to get it done. And some of you guys were telling me how you were going to get it done. What are your activities? You got activity one, activity two, activity three. Is activity one holding an uh, event? Is activity two holding a workshop? Is activity three doing a program? All you got to do is list what those activities are. Now down on this page, if you look at goal number, if you look at goal number two, which is to build the actual program, I put some goals there. So goal number 2.1 would be to continuous, uh, it's continuous network collaborative committee meetings. Uh, number 2.2 is not there because you can come up with yours. And goal three is to develop the uh, development of the whatever the organization name is. You would put that in. programs and services. That would be goal two for your objectives. Okay, now your implementation. So your goal is what you're going to do. Your objective is how you're going to do it. Your implementation is when you're going to do it. When are you going to do what you're talking about? Okay, so activity one would be to create a program for low to moderate income families. You're going to develop um, a housing program for veterans. Activity two would be um, that housing program is going to be operated how often? It's a housing program, so you're going to be open when? Um, Three, two, 24 7. You're going to be open 24 uh, 7. You're going to, and goal two might be to provide weekly activities. Or activity two, I'm sorry, might be to provide weekly activities. Well, over here you're going to say what those activities are and when they're going to be. So goal number one relates to what over here? I mean, activity one relates to what over here? Activity one. Whatever you put over here, you're going to address it over here at the time. When you're going to do it. That's exactly right. Activity one over here has to do with the evaluation. What is the evaluation? How many people are you going to serve? So if you're going to open a nine-bed facility, how many people are you going to serve? Nine. Nine. But you have, might affect a thousand people with their family members. Or you might have some other activities in the courtyard that would include the community. So you have to determine how many you're going to serve. So right here, this is what you're going to do. This is, anybody write it down? How you're going to do it. 
This one would be when you're going to do it. And this one would be how you're going to evaluate it. So that means how many are you going to serve. If you notice, the budget is also here. You don't wait till you get to the end of the grant to start writing the grant budget. You're doing that budget right away. So there's not much budget for what you're going to do. There's not much budget for how you're going to do it. But when you get over here to the implementation of it, that's when the budget starts. So how much is it going to? How much is your equipment going to cost? How much are your supplies going to cost? And how much is your travel? And this is all. Can, this can all be done on one page, pretty much. Now I broke it up in hopes that we had the homework, which would have you writing it. But I'm serious. This is the easier way. This is the much easier way. Just fill it out right here. So we've got what you're going to do. We've got how you're going to do it. We've got when you're going to do it. We've got how you're going to evaluate your success or failure. And over here we've got what is your outcome. So if you have a non-bed facility. I believe statistics say that you will probably be 70 to 80 percent at capacity. So that tells you about how many people you're going to serve. But now they're, they used to allow you two years to have them bedded down. You don't get that now. You get about eight to nine months. I don't know what um, President Trump is going to do, but you were getting just eight to nine months. It might be shorter than that now. Then you get the next crew. So what does that tell you? About how can you figure out how many you're going to serve per year? How can you project? Mm -hmm. All right, mathematician right there. That's right. Okay, he said you multiply by the, by the, okay, if you can, if you got nine beds, but you're only going to be at 70% capacity, you're going to take 70% of that nine, multiply that by 12, that tells you approximately how many people you can expect to serve. So your range would be 70% capacity for however many months you can serve them. So if they get two months, you would multiply it by six. So you would take your seven people, we say, times six, uh, because you th they get two months each. So that would be seven times six. That would be the number of people you could serve per year, going with the averages. That's why you want to know your business. You want to know what you're doing. You want to get some best practices. Find the research that supports what you're doing. Don't make it up. Because if you make it up, you're not going to be able to meet your goals and objectives. And if you don't meet your goals and objectives, you won't get any more money. So if you just want to uh, provide something to um, a, a care package for teachers, because I'm a teacher, and Boy, do we get abused at times. Um, and I, I know that people show the kids being abused, and I, I, I see the teacher side, and I see how we get abused at times, and I said, boy, it would be nice if, and I was thinking about you guys, it would be nice if somebody took on the teachers and professional development, some of the things that, that they need. Because today I came in, and this girl was ready to go to war with me. She had on a hoodie. She, no, she couldn't wear a hoodie. She had on a hoodie. She had on a hat, sitting up in the classroom with her hat, and she wanted me to come at her. And I said, um, sweetheart, and I just did like this and continued to teach. And then she didn't take it up. She took off the hat, but she left on the hoodie. You know good and well, not to wear a hoodie. So I came over there and I said, uh, Hogan rules, please. And oh boy, by this time she was like, I mean, she was she was really getting the head nods and she was ready to go off. So I went over, grabbed her by the hand. And we walked right on out the door, and I hugged her, and she bawled like a don't know what. And this is one that I've had major trouble out of. But anyway, so we are taking on so many issues, and I still don't know her issue. I told her, I said, nah, I can't make you pray, but I can pray. That's, and that's all I told her. I can't make you pray, but I can pray for you. Go to the restroom. I didn't have no more trouble out of her for the, the hour, and I have a two glasses of water on me. And she was happy when she came in the next time. But yes. So. When you're talking about the two projects <coughs> at the front that has to do with uh, housing for veterans, 
then it's going to be beneficial to actually go out and uh, pull up housing for veterans programs and see what they actually do. Exactly, exactly. And the reason I mentioned the teacher program is because there's a lot of money out there for funding that's not touched. So as you're thinking about programs that you can do, don't limit yourself, there's all kinds. There's all kinds of programs, exactly. And what you're gonna do is go find the needs and then fill the need. So whatever the need is, you find the need and fill it. So that's it for writing the program. We have gone through everything there is for putting your grant together. That's it. Now all of these other documents I gave you are nothing but support for this. This is what you have to have filled out. And those other extra pages that I gave you, is this broken up into different pages? That's why I tell you, I'm going to teach you the old fashioned way, but I'm also going to teach you a new way because the only time it takes me longer than a few hours to really put the grant together is when I don't use my system. This is exclusive. When I don't use this, that's when it takes me forever to put these grants together. <coughs> use it. You've got it. Use it. Use it. Well, all the other papers that I gave you is filler. Trust your abilities. Now, it might be good for you to fill this out initially, and it might be good for you to fill this out because this will help you in filling this out, which is that, it's this same thing. This is just com a complete one, ready for you to put your name and all of that in here. Now, this one talks about doing your handbooks and all of that, so it breaks down some of the things that you may not think about. Uh, in the collaborative development, it talks about setting up your develop, uh, developing a program planning committee. Um, that the goal number one, remember your goal number one is building your collaborative. So over here, I've got um, under sustainability, I have developing a program committee that can help you keep it going. I've got develop a finance committee and funds development team. So everything you need is here. The grant is basically written on this piece of paper that you got right here. All you got to do is put your name in it and your program name in it and whatever you're doing. This really is it for foundations, for the ones that only will allow you 350 words. You could take this tonight and fill out that Ford grant with this. You could take this tonight and go to that NGO website that I gave you and fill out about five of those different grants with this. But what do you have to do with this? What do you, what do you have to do? Fill in your information, which means this. Every one of those bold, um, capitalized letters is one of these. And you don't even have to use this if you don't want to. You could just go through and write it in. But if you ever decide, I want to hire someone, this is what they're going to need. Because everything that they need to put your brand together is on here. OK. Another great class. Let's get her here. Let's get some homework done and come back prepared. Okay, thank you. Okay.